How's it going guys? It is 3.39 a.m. 26th of April here in Japan. We have a past level question for micro slash cardio for step one. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, LN underscore medical, MHL man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Let's start the clip. 46 year old man today, history fever, chills. One week ago, he underwent a root canal. He has history of rheumatic fever as a kid, diastolic rumble, auscultate at the left midclavicular line. When you have history of rheumatic heart disease as a kid, you're going to have mitral stenosis, okay? 99% of mitral stenoses are due to history of rheumatic heart disease as a kid. Obviously, uh, during the time that you actually have the acute rheumatic fever, it'll be mitral regurge. But then five to 10 years later, valve scars over, becomes mitral stenosis. Blood cultures are drawn. Uh, empiric antibiotic therapy with vancomycin and gentamicin is administered. For TCK level stuff, you're going to do blood cultures before antibiotics. That's important. Don't have to worry about three tubes, nonsense, anything like that. A lot we can talk about uh, really in the antibiotics. Vancomycin covers gram positives, including MRSA. Gentamicin covers gram negative rods. So this is a broad coverage, this combo right here. Which of the following best describes most likely cause organism? Let's just hop to the answer choices. So clearly this is endocarditis, right? So murmur plus fever, that's endocarditis. All right, you say, well, you already had a murmur. It's not necessarily new onset. Doesn't fucking matter, okay? Let's just whip through the answers. Choice A, catalyzed positive, wrong fucking answer, because this refers to the staph, okay? So when we talk about gram positive cocci, we've got catalase negative, which is all the strep. We have catalase positive, which is the staph. Now, you could do a 46 minute discussion, every little categorization, uh, taxonomy, all the details. We're not gonna do that. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, clear zone of hemolysis and blood agar, which refers to beta hemolysis, wrong fucking answer. Okay, so in terms of the beta hemolytic strep, group A strep, strep pyogenes, group B strep, strep agalactiae, okay, strep pyogenes obviously can cause strep pharyngitis, skin infections, impetigo, erysipelas, cellulitis, very important, made lots of clips on that stuff. Uh, strep agalactiae, obviously neonatal infections, wrong fucking answer. Show a C, coagulase positive, wrong fucking answer, because this refers to staph aureus. So staph aureus causes acute endocarditis. That's going to be patients who have no history of heart disease of any kind. Okay, so IV drug user, as an example, now gets endocarditis, it's going to be staph aureus, or just miscellaneous uh, endocarditis, okay? And no history of any valve abnormalities, as I just said, staph aureus. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, gram positive diplococci, wrong fucking answer. First, a strep pneumo, okay? Don't confuse the gram negative diplococci, naysaria, meningitis, gonorrhea, but gram positive diplococci, strep pneumo. So obviously, pneumonia, right? So most common cause of low bar pneumonia, uh, both in immunocompetent and immunocompromised. If you give you an HIV patient, for example, with a low bar pneumonia, that's strep pneumo, not pneumocystis, the latter being bilateral. Strep pneumo, most important slash most common cause of otitis media. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice E, gram positive cocci and clusters, wrong fucking answer, refers to staph aureus. Okay, so we're talking past level buzzy stuff here. Okay, so clusters, gram positive cocci, staph aureus, gram positive diplococci, strep pneumo, and then other strep, for example, Strep viridens, strep pyogenes, strep agalactiae, even the enterococci, strep bovis, gram positive cocci in chains. Okay, lengthy discussion. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice F, green zone of hemolysis and blood agar refers to partial hemolysis or alpha hemolysis, correct answer. So, past level, this is strep viridens, subacute endocarditis. Strep viridens is a broad term that can be broken down further into strep mitis, strep mutans, strep sanguis or sanguinis. Okay, so strep viridens becomes mitis, mutans, sanguis, sanguinis. All those answers can be seen on NBME material. Okay, so you need to know all of those refer to strep viridens. Subacute endocarditis. Okay, so history of Valvular abnormality followed by endocarditis. Okay, so dental procedures, very uh, buzzy preceding event. 
So you're going to have introduction of strepviridins into the blood via the oral cavity. It's just normal flora, and that's what is going to enable adhesion to the valve. It produces carbohydrate limit dextrins, okay? And so strep viridins and ocarditis. So green zone of hemolysis, strep viridins, as well as strep pneumo, okay? But this is just some basic microbiology, nothing dramatic. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.